Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about auto resizing video and images in Adobe Premiere Pro. Mm -hmm. All right, first things first, you have complete control whether this preference is on or off, and there are three settings for it. Adobe created one of these set settings, scale to frame size, for performance. And it's also good for people who have very large images and they want to stick them on the timeline. My recommendation, if you don't want to resize an image and you want an image to be exactly the, the frame size, then make it the frame size in something like Photoshop. And you can batch that out and drop it in. Then you don't have to worry about it. Um, I use fairly powerful computers and sometimes I have images four or 5,000 pixels and I never worry about it. So for me, it's not an issue, but you have control. So I want to show you that the setting that I'm going to show you is something that affects your media, some of the media, even after you've changed the, the preference. So this preference will affect the media you have imported. Uh, and sometimes you cannot change those settings and it can be a real pain. Um, so let's, I'll show you where this, this preference is. So it's in the edit menu on Windows in the Premiere Pro menu on the Mac, preferences, media. I've set a keyboard shortcut so I can quickly get to this because I'm going to be needing to open this to change the setting over and over and over again because I want to show you what happens with different settings. So here it is, default media scaling. And it's called media instead of video and images because it's any kind of media, including uh, video and images. So none means bring in my media at the original size and don't do anything to it either in the project bin or in the timeline, okay? Next up is scale to frame size. And this is a really confusing one for a lot of people. I'll show you why in a second. Next is set to frame size. This is the equivalent of you going into the motion settings in the effects controls and changing the scale value. To me, this is the safest way. You're never going to uh, pixelate a video or an image if you do this. In fact, I just leave this off and I manually do this. If I need to resize a ton of images, then I'll use a preset, okay? But I wanna show you scale to frame size. And I'm going to import three very large clips. Two of them are Ultra HD, 3840, 2160, and one is 4K. So in my media browser, I've got these three clips here from ArtGrid, and I've got them selected, and I'll right click and I'll import them. There we go. And you won't see any difference. They just show up here. Now what I will do is I'll bring the video info over to the left just so we can see the, the sizes. So my, pre, my sequence is 1080p, and the, this one is Ultra HD, this one's 4K, and that one is also Ultra HD. So when you bring clips into a sequence, dragging and dropping, you should get this warning. The clip doesn't match the sequence. Do you want to change the sequence? or keep the sequence. And this is for someone who accidentally made a sequence that's either too big or too small, and you now wanna resize it for the media is. My little tip here is always create your sequences, your timelines, based on what your output is. So if you're going to 1080p on YouTube, make 1080p. Even though I record the screen at 4K or Ultra HD, and I record my camera at HD, my sequence is always HD. Okay, you can always tell it to don't bug me about this anymore and just keep settings. You'll never see that warning come up. You also won't see that warning. If I had a title in here already and I dragged those same clips, I wouldn't get that warning. That warning only shows up if there's nothing else in the timeline and you're dragging in the wrong size clips. But that's not about resizing. Let's go have a look at these. So the, here's the three clips, and they fit perfectly. And if you select one or all of the clips, you'll see this setting here, 
scale to frame size. All three of these have this setting. This is a checkbox setting. It's a sticky setting. Set to frame size is not. Scale to frame size is a clip setting that is set in the timeline. And because you set it in the preferences when you imported it, guess what? It's a sticky setting on the stuff that's in the uh, the project bin. To me, that's a, a bit of a, a scary thing because I never know what this setting's gonna do. Uh, I just wanna show you that they have been resized, but if you go to the motion settings and look at scale, scale is at 100%. This is the confusing part. Wait a minute, I've got Ultra HD and 4K and I've scaled it down and it's showing up at 100%, why would Adobe do this? They did this, as I said at the beginning, for performance issues. It's the equivalent as if, kind of, sort of, it's like you rasterized this as a, a 1080p clip and stuck it in there. So it really is for, for performance. It made sense for a lot of, uh, of broadcast graphics folks who were still working in 720p and they wanted to future-proof so all their graphics were 1080p, but they didn't want to have the overhead of 1080p, so they used this setting and they dropped it in and it didn't rasterize the graphic. Um, but anyway, let's keep going because this is going to make sense in a second. So watch this. I'm going to select these and hold down the Alt key and duplicate them. So now I have the exact same clips, all three clips. But remember that setting that I had for scale to frame size? If I click that again, it will turn it off. It will also turn it off if I click set to frame size. So set to frame size overrides scale to frame size and it looks exactly the same. Watch this, set to frame size, everything is exactly the same. All the media looks, come on, oh yeah. All the media looks exactly the same, but now when I click on this, you'll see that one's at 50%. That one's at 46.9, because remember that's the one that's 4096, that's the 4K. And there's the other Ultra HD at 50%. To me, this is much better because I can see the number and I know if I'm going to make this too big or not. Let me show you this again, the third way, and I'll drag this over here. I'll select all of them. Remember, these have the scale setting, which is checked. If I turn this off and don't set set to frame size, now we have the original size. And you can see it's much, much larger. These are the original size clips. So if I zoom out a bit, you'll see that's how big this clip is. That's how big that clip is. And that's how big that clip is. So set to frame size, sticks it in the right spot and everything is good. Okay, wonderful, excellent. Now I wanna show you what happens. Let's remove all this media. I'll go back to my preference and I'll turn this off and I'll import the same media again. Drag it in, it's too large, select it all, right click, scale to frame size, now when I drag this in again, it's not going to have that setting on it. So this scale to frame size is now a timeline setting, not a project bin media setting that when I import it. So remember before I set set scale, set scale is now locked into these clips and you have to remember and you have to turn the darn things off. So that's why I think this is, is dangerous. But I wanna show you what happens when we enlarge something that's scale to frame size versus set to frame size. This is where the, it starts to pixelate and get soft. Okay, so this time I'll choose set. That's the one that changes the scale in the uh, effects control panel. So I'm going to import these here and they fit, okay. And instead, I'm gonna reset these all to 
So now they don't fit, okay? And just like before, I'll scale these to frame size. So now they look identical. So that one is identical. Oh, I think I got the order um, wrong. There we go. Okay. So they look like that. They look like that. Everything works. And as far as your output is concerned, right now you probably wouldn't notice a difference. But let's say that we wanted to increase the size of this. Remember this is uh, at 50% or, or close to 50%. That means I still have enough room in here to enlarge these in an HD frame. I don't have to scale these down. Because I have large frame sizes, I have the freedom to pan and zoom in. So why don't I do that? Okay, so for each one of these, I'm going to set these to 100%. So now I've got that ability, and for her, I'm just going to drag that vertically down so I can see her face. I wanted things with detail, so we're going to look at this drawing in a second, and we're going to look at the grill of this car. Okay, so right now, this is, this is set at 100%, this is set at 100%, but it's scaled to frame size. So you have to double the amount. So if I want to fill this frame up with the, with the original scale value, then this one has to be 200%. And uh, which one is the Ultra HD or 4K? The architect. So she needs to be 200% and drag down. And this one is a little bit odd, so it needs to be, I've already worked this out, 213.6. So now they're equal. To compare these, I'm going to use the comparison view and this view here so I can draw a line between these. And I'll start at the beginning with the architectural one and this. So there's our before and after and I'm going to make this larger. And what you should see, and you, I hope we can see a little bit of this on uh, a YouTube compression, but you'll definitely see a difference between the lines. And I'll zoom in with Camtasia so you can see that difference. The hands are a little bit blurred. That, that doesn't show uh, too much. But you'll definitely see something in the lines. Now for the next one, I may have put position off a little bit. Yes. So we need to put her there. Okay, and, and maybe, you know what? I, I'm gonna do something just so you know what, what uh, it's a little easier to see. So this is scale to frame size on the left. Okay, and if I move that over, we're looking at set to frame size. So again, let's look at, look at the, you'll see some clarity in the eye. I picked something with, an, with a light in her eye and you can definitely see there the difference. That's clearer. That's set to frame size. And that's scale to frame size. And look at the hair. It gets a little bit soft. And then the last one is this uh, car. And a lot of these faces are too blurry. The only thing that you'll really see a difference in the grill of that car. So scale to frame size, you know, sure, it could save you some time in, on import and drag it in. By the way, it won't fill a frame. So if, if you have stuff taken that's more square based, 
uh, from a camera and you're dropping it in the timeline, you'll still get black bars. So even if you scale to frame size, it does not fill the frame. It scales it until one of the sizes, top or uh, uh, sides, hits and then it stops scaling and you could have black bars. So it, it's not a fill frame thing. Premiere Pro does not have a fill frame yet. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Adobe will have that in the future. So scale the frame size, pretty powerful. But as I showed you, it can be a setting that when you resize a scale to frame size setting, after the fact, it could get blurry. Hey, if you're new to video revealed and you have found this informative, maybe a little confusing, but informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that through videorevealed.com slash shop. You can donate once, monthly, any amount you want. We love all of our wonderful donors. Thank you, folks. And uh, there's lots of free stuff to download. You can become a member and get even more stuff. There's stuff you can buy on our store, too. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to peek inside a setting that you may not even know you set and get you on the right track to making sure your media looks the best it can.